The seven deadly sins of jungling are ones committed by junglers of every rank. We had the 10 commandments of jungling earlier in the year, but the immense amount of coaching and challenge breakdown since then have revealed that all of you are in fact sinners. Now I don't mean your early game feast of famine champions or your obsession with abusing Spear of Shoujin, but I'm talking about the jungle principles you think you do right, but you don't. I'm talking about all the things you should be doing in order to climb and perfect your craft to reach your peak rank, but you don't. So hopefully we can have some fun in this video and also give you some things to think about as we head towards the end of season 13. And of course, this will also be great for season 14. And yes, while I made one many years ago, we can go ahead and build on that and apply it to the modern game as the game has changed many times over the past couple of years. And now without further hesitation, let's repent your souls. And the first one is obviously going to be lust. That's because not only do you have a lust for your rank that blinds your need to actually become a better player, you overextend when conditions are met. You don't let things go when you get invaded and then you lust for the defense of your camps. You lust for the heralds, for the grubs, or the enemy's wolf camp because you just have to go and see those puppies. And obviously the classic one, yes, everybody here, everybody watching loves a scuttle crab and it's worth dying for. Now in a movie, yes, but in League of Legends and our games, no. Too many games are still lost because we greed for something and die when we shouldn't. This goes for silver, it goes for challenger. It even goes for pro play when they just get a little bit lusty after something that they don't need, this cannon here, that wave there. It's really something that is pronounced through every aspect of play. When you lust after a buff, you lust after a dragon, you lust after anything that you potentially can't have, but you just simply want. Now, some junglers are more prone than others. Rengar players, for example, love to lust after ADCs, which is the right call because they're dumb and they have a push and they deserve it. They're lusting for a cannon wave, so you say, okay, come here. The thing is, you mustn't confuse this with greed, because being greedy is a little different, we'll cover that in a second. Lusting is defined as a strong, overwhelming desire or craving, and then it compromises what would necessarily be a good play, because you are so blinded by your focus on what is incorrect. And as junglers, this can be your lust to full clear and have quadruple control. You just desire to have that 8 to 10 CS per minute and you can't let it go. And as my palms also get sweaty thinking about giving up a grump to rotate to a scenario, it's honestly the most important thing to control because if you don't, you're going to be playing 50 screens of grey as you die 50 times. And if you want to personally fix your sins before the end of season 13, I have a free jungle improvement resource as well as a dedicated program where we have jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching coaching VOD libraries, weekly free video content see nowhere else, as well as Q&As and patch note rundowns, as well as a private jungle discord. And if there's one thing I'm good at, it's converting junglers to gold, to emerald, to diamond, to master plus. If you want to climb faster than anyone you know, jungle diff every game you play, click the link below or head to vakayu.gg. Now let's make this a little bit more visceral, shall we? Diving into gluttony. Don't take every resource on the map due to this last or due to anything else. You don't need all CS and experience from your laners when you gank their lanes and shove it out. If you get to kill, give them the gold and the CS. If they get to kill and you're a carry, yeah, maybe you can take some, but if you're a supportive champion, why do you need the gold anyway? Give it to them, help them out without starving them. Now, junglers who are carry and have win conditions around them, sure, taking those kills to all these scenarios, that's great. But you don't want to be someone who's a glutton, taking the 10th kill, the 15th kill, the 20th kill, the 25th kill. Almost every single jungler in the game does very well when they get early kills because that gold and experience impact hits the entire map. But then you have to understand when it's time to hand it off to the Jack's top lane, who's fat, to the Kaisi in the bottom lane. And no, you don't have to give everything away. It's just, look, if there's a free kill that you can give them, do it. Don't let kills get away while trying to give it, but understand that the intention is more important here than the result. Think of it this way. If you can understand that most games are once for a 2v8 and understand who that second person is on your team and help them get fed as well, the easier your climb will be. Don't have a narrow-sided perspective on your jungling that lets you take everything for yourself and ignore everything else. With this, you can also tilt your team and make yourself lose even if you are the fed person. You don't want to have an unhappy squad behind you. For example, you go ahead and gank the bottom lane, you grab two kills, you take the dragon, you invade the enemy team, you force your bottom lane to help you with the dragon, help you invade and now they die. You then go back to base, you take a herald and then you gank top lane, you take the kill. You don't use the herald, he dies and then you go back and use the herald because you're like, well he's dead, I can take all the gold. All that's happened here is you compromise your bottom lane through a gank, they got nothing, you force them to overstay and they died, therefore they lost something, now the enemy bot lane's ahead, you never go back there, you have all the gold for yourself, your top lane has got nothing, you are by yourself and your laners are losing. Please understand what gluttony does to junglers, and obviously, they're very unfun to play with. You've seen now throughout this entire section, apart from the minimap, but the thing is, if your team doesn't understand how to win, which is most ELOs, you're gonna need someone's help. Simply understand that you might not be the win condition, know who it is, play around them, you will get so many more wins when you don't glutton yourself, full of kills you don't need, and you don't lust after the 25th perfect ace zero death game 
because you're not gonna be winning the game. Now let's jump into greed here because greed is a little bit different. This does build on the previous two points as well, and of course I can understand why that might be confusing, but the game isn't about you only. Think about it in terms of your climb as well. Forcing things to greed for a soul point, to greed for an over push, to go ahead and say, you know what, maybe I can just just a few more camps, right? The problem with taking a few more camps after, say, a Baron is that you go back to base, your team don't need to go back to base. They carry on pushing because they really can't do anything else. You're greedy for Grump and Wolves after Baron. Now you're out of sync with them. They take a fight. You think it's their fault. You didn't need to go ahead and buy an extra longsword. You didn't need to finish the Sterex gauge. You simply needed to buy what you could with your team after Baron and then go and join them to win the game. This doesn't just affect in-game though when you decide to overstay your welcome in any situation. Greeting for a side wave, beyond vision control when you know they're coming out of base, Greeting for an inhib when you know they're about to respawn and you should just be leaving. All of this factors into how you win games. You lose the ebb and flow because you over-greed scenarios. Not that you were lusting after that inhib or you were potentially trying to be a glutton for punishment. You just decided that, hey, I think I can get more here than I am and I think I deserve it, which isn't true. You don't have to force everything because you can, but rather take other people's perspectives in mind and work around it. Coaching I had many years ago from a Nunu player who's playing with the Kassadin, really try to force the game state elevation with his clad duo. They try to push them out forward to end, greedy for turrets, greedy for color jungling. But their Kassadin wasn't ready, the bottom lane were behind and losing. They kept greeting for more and more and more. The enemy team eventually collapsed on them multiple times, 5v2, 3v2, they lost their advantage, their team never got back into it, and they lost that game. That game was uploaded to the gameplay channel three years ago. That person is not collecting footage for this video being a master tier player. He learned how to control his greed, understand his win condition, and now he's here. Five people being fed is better than one person being fed and having to Sisyphus every single damn game you play. I mean, I know League is competitive and stressful, but there's no reason it should take years off your life, especially voluntarily. Don't greed, because that takes years off of my life because I have to keep watching it in the VOD scouting. Now, the big one is sloth gaming. We are all lovely and lazy. We just want to sequence and relax and, oh no, this guy ganked. I don't want to rotate to that. There is such a thing as a lazy gaming, but it's usually whiskey nights or fun nights or playing normals or something like that. You don't want to practice your first clears. Fine, lose temper, you're slow. So you have lazy pathing, lazy clearing, your game knowledge is lacking because you're too lazy to study a few hours and figure it out. You're too lazy to react to a gank you could impact. You're too lazy to take a herald you could take while the enemy jungler is on the bottom side. You're too lazy to do anything proactive enough in the game to take control of it. That's you coin flip your rank. Jungle is strongest when you know something and you use that in your advantage and don't overlook it. You know the enemy jungler has no flash and they are low. You could easily go ahead and kill them on grump but you decide, you know what, my Krugs and Raptors are pretty good. When you have information and you don't use it in an aggressive way to control the game, you don't understand how to actually carry, and you're basically leaving the entire fate of your climb to the randoms on your team. Which in the previous point I said are kind of useful to have, but if you're not helping yourself, you can't help them either, thus you're just a blob. Every rank you go up, the faster the game gets. Why? Because the decisions they make happen quicker, because they're not lazy about anything. They become more aggressive, up-tempo, controlling, nothing is a boring moment, there's no waffling, it's move, 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 move and the advantage and the direction of the movement towards the enemy's nexus, whatever allows us to happen. Expand the knowledge you know by experimenting a little bit and noticing what you can do better in order to win games. Hey, look at your VOD review, see where the jungler was, if he was topside and you could have taken a dragon, do it. He then dies so you can take his blue and gank his bottom lane, do that as well. Why is that good? Because you knew he had no topside camps, he was going to respawn and come down to the bottom side anyway. Now you can reset and go to the Herald. Don't be lazy about learning these kinds of path things and also doing these kinds of path things. Don't limit yourself to a thing you always do in game, i.e. autopilot. Look at what new stuff you can do in every game if possible. And for number five, we're going to be talking about wrath. I actually think there's two kinds of wrath here, the good kind and the bad kind. The good kind is where you use it in a positive way, the Kobe Bryant way, in order to take it out on the enemy. So if someone invades you, steals your buff, annoys you. Okay, fine. I'm just going to flame horizon you, take all your cams, make your laners miserable. You will never see another thing this game and then you do it. But you do it by adhering to jungle fundamentals and principles. You don't have bad wrath, which is, well, you invaded me and stole my stuff. I'm gonna do the same to you. And you just run in their jungle trying to get the best of them. It's not measured, it's all emotional. And none of us like that aspect of Anakin Skywalker, so why would you put it in your jungling? Do not chase people down for an eternity. Do not rage invade for no reason. You shouldn't be invading for no reason anyway, but you know, one thing at a time. Do not let the actions of your opponent play with your mind. You are still king of the mountain, the jungle diff mountain, and when they want to try and claw their way up through some secret passageway, you let rip. If they do wacky shit to you and you get tilted, the game isn't over yet. With proper jungle knowledge, you can overcome their silliness and end the cat-mouse chase by winning. Yes, be the cat, not the mouse. 
There's always ways you can punish someone, expand your mind, expand your horizons, become the evil villain whose wrath is calculated and patient and says, you know what, I expected you to do A, but you did B. But that's okay because that means A is still available for me to take away from you and then I'm going to take away C, D, E, F and G as well. I'd say more letters but your wacky silliness made me angry and the game already ended. So in essence and in summary, the wrath of the jungle is the good kind is when you take it out on the map. It's not personal for the jungler, the map just now dictates that he be eviscerated. The emotional kind is when you chase the enemy jungler around, letting him dictate your actions, you take your eye off the ball and all of a sudden his wacky silliness is actually winning him the game. Don't let that happen. I will know and I will find you. Number six is a little bit more theoretical again, it's envy. Blaming people, blaming the outsiders, blaming external stuff, having an unhealthy comparison with yourself and with others that may or may not be better than you. Hey, so-and-so in your friend group got challenger. Cool, good for them. You didn't deserve it more than him. He got it first. What are they doing that you are not? Or what are you doing that they are not, right? Think about it from the negative perspective as well. Review and be honest with yourself. We all make mistakes and in the end, you will continue making mistakes but identifying them and rectifying them one at a time is what makes you grow. That's what my entire jungle core system is about, is identifying these things and fixing them and improving every single step of the way from bronze all the way up to challenger. And at the root of that is not being envious over anyone else in your life or that you've ever seen and heard of. Do not be envious because the enemy ADC who you camped gets a free win. Do not be envious because the enemy jungler gets good laners. Look at it always from the perspective of what could I have done differently to impact this game in a different way, in a better way. Not all games will be won by you, we understand this, not all the games will be carried by you. You understand this. But as soon as you start deflecting blame and being jealous of outside factors, you become someone ugly. You become someone who does Tarek Yee funnel. I mean, imagine. That's actually a really good segue because pride, you know, prideful people would not do funnel ever. And you always want to lone wolf your games, right? You want to be the 1v9. I know we use that term a lot. And when I use it, yes, I mean, you are the main protagonist. You are the carry how to make yourself play that way but I don't mean to kill everyone else on your team. It's not five guys versus one dude and four corpses. Do not think you do everything perfectly. Remove the ego here, have pride in your jungling to understand that which is good and that which is bad. Understand that not everything is you, 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 and only you. That sounds like a terrible movie that Adam Sandler would make. If you might allow me to use an astrophysics reference, try to be a simple solar system with planetary objects orbiting you and a thing that exists together in one unit. Don't be a black hole singularity that eats everything around it because you're gonna be dark and have nothingness inside. That'll be the depression in you when you realize that everybody else is climbing because you couldn't have pride enough to recognize this. And the best thing, understand that sometimes you ain't the sun, you're just gonna be one of the planets and when you can recognize that, again, good things will happen. Understand your role each game, rather than setting yourself to be the god amongst humanity for every game possible, do all the stuff by yourself and punish the enemy jungler. Use that as your root cause, yes? Make the enemy jungler have a difficult time, amplify your lane's ability to win themselves, and obviously get yourself fed through your own econ. The three tenets of jungling that I always espouse, or in plainer words, the three things I tell you that jungling's about. I even made a graphic, you see? So in conclusion, all these points are important to isolate your improvement, becoming a better jungler, because you're understanding that you are not committing these sins. Now, if you're saying, okay, for Caillou, I understand, I mustn't do these things, but how do they relate explicitly to the jungle theory? What do I do and not do in my rank to actually climb? Well, good thing I made a video on that topic on your screen now.